I feel like everybody's got like a superhero that they like want to tap into. For me, mine's always been like the Joker. In one of the movies, he asked Two-Face, do I really look like a guy with a plan? I like that. To me, it's almost like flowing like water, you know? However you want things to go, you can make things happen with whatever's going on. But plans don't always work, you know what I mean? Ronnie Bell, he finds a crease. Finally brought down at the 31-yard line. As soon as I went to, like, walk off and I fell was when I was like, okay, like, hold on. Felt like a gut punch. The whole stadium went quiet, and, and we went quiet just because Ronnie's a voted captain. He's a leader on our team. The doctor had mentioned, like, my ACL. They said it was going to be, like, nine months. You don't typically think your son's gonna get hurt. You know, so you make a flight arrangements. My flight left at, you know, roughly nine o'clock that morning. So I get on the plane, I'm flying back. We're texting back and forth. I'm pretty sure at some point he realized I stopped texting. And I just got super emotional, um, just thinking to myself, I left my son here. <laughs> um, he's by himself and no one's there. You know, family-wise, uh, no one's there. But, you know, like I told him, at that moment, I have to trust Michigan that they're going to do everything possible to make sure it's good for him. I came in Sunday, you know, no more tears. You know what I mean? It was time to, you know, that was day one of recovering. A setback is a setup to come back. You know, it's one of those deals where I can't do it on the field, but what role can I serve to play the best role that I can to, to ensure that the guy's gonna be successful on Saturdays? To be able to make the most of what now was my situation, you know, not being able to play, but I can still coach the receivers, coach the guys and, and be here with the guys emotionally and, you know, mentally. You will see Ronnie out there with call sheets at practice making sure receivers are in the right places, doing the right things. He was in meetings. He was making sure that he was supporting us, even though he couldn't really be with us on the field. I had been like rehabbing like pretty heavy at that point. Coach Harbaugh was trying to get me to suit up. The trainers knew it wasn't a good idea <laughs> because if I was gonna suit up, I was gonna try to run around. Dad even said no, because <laughs> I said there's not a chance, because I know you. You know, you're, you're supposed to put pads on and just stand there. You're gonna try to put pads on and run. And they had not fully let that go yet, so. I'm like, man, nah, like, just keep things the way that we've been doing it, we've been winning, you know what I mean? Like, keep it how we got it. Mike Holm scores, touchdown Michigan! The 2021 Michigan Wolverine football team is your Big Ten champions. Definitely like a bittersweet, a little bit, because you want to be out there. To watch that happen right in front of me is another thing that just like kept me so up. The biggest like mental wall I think I was facing was just like, like man, you better come out of this, like better. Coming back and sucking, there was no way I could let that happen. I could feel myself being timid, you know what I mean? Like I could feel myself like, like pulling myself back from certain situations. I mean, I'd have like bad dreams, you know what I mean? Like just uh, things keeping me up at night. He was really worried about him jumping and landing again. Cutting, planting, going down instead of running, you know what I mean? Like so many different things that would just play over and over in your head. I'm like, Ronnie, you need to sleep. And he's like, Dad, I can't stop thinking. You know, what if, what if, what if? And of course, me being who I am, like, well, what if it doesn't happen that way? It was like day five. I just remember leaving my feet. And that, that was like the first time like, I left my feet to go get a ball. I don't think he came down with that one. But he said, Dad, I got up and I ran back to the huddle as if I scored an 80-yard touchdown. First time I really ran like a hard dig route in the spring. And then the first time I left my feet, like those two weights lifted off were like, Man, like, and after that, man, I just felt like a butterfly. 
from Ann Arbor, Michigan. It's the home opener for the Wolverines taking on Colorado State. Before the game, my dad was there, and I went from like so excited to just like, like just tears. And he puts his face into my chest, and we, we just share a moment right there, and he's crying, and I'm crying, but I'm saying, this is everything you work for. And number eight is back. The microphone is yours, Ann Arbor. That crowd applause you hear is for Ronnie Bell. When we were in my room, we were looking down that tunnel of what these next nine months, what this next year was about to be, it really felt like I was on the other end of that tunnel. Like I'm ready. To the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Ronnie Bell. Here we go, folks. Fourth and goal from the three. You can't just get some. you got to get it all on this one. Patterson back to throw. Pressure coming. Looks. Throws. When he initially threw it to Ronnie, I thought, we, we've tied the score. This is it. No oh, drop! No! Drop! Ronnie Bell couldn't hold on. Wow, that would have tied it up. For me, it wasn't even that, like, you know, like I dropped the ball or like I lost us the game. It was like, I just lost this game for the seniors. That was like the part that was like really messing me up. There's Ronnie Bell in this field for a moment. He keeps his head up. Ronnie and I take the long walk down to the spot where he dropped the ball. We just talked, and I looked him in the eyes, and I said, Ronnie, this spot right here is going to make your career here in Michigan. What just happened isn't what's going to define me. What's going to define you is how you answer, how you respond. Are you going to let it crumble you? Are you going to let it make you better? And he just looked me in the eyes, and he said, Dad, it's going to make me better. On my drive back to Pittsburgh, Ronnie's in the plane headed back to Michigan. And we're seeing things on Twitter. He was receiving DMs, like, get off the team. I just remember removing all my social media. But then he gets this certain email that came directly to him. He screenshots it and he sends it to me. He goes, look at this mess. You need to quit, go back and play basketball. And so dad goes into dad mode, of course. And before he sends me the message of do not do anything, it was already done. I put it on social media just so it can get out there like this is what's happening, you know, over a drop pass. I was angry and it was protecting my son. People started almost looking out for him. The trust in all of my teammates, like, hadn't been broken, hadn't been lost. That was like, what helped me, you know, get over the hump. I think the love that the Michigan fan base gave him outside of this particular person and a few others, as far as, you know, social media go, the love that the fan base has given him was unreal. I told him, I said, Ronnie, you got more love for a drop pass <laughs> than anyone in America, you know, could ever dream of. And he actually asked me why. I said, Ronnie, I think it's more of the fact you give it everything you have when you're out there. You know, you didn't drop it on purpose. You gave it everything you had. I think the fan base saw that in him. They've given him so much love. Our family can't, we can't say thank you enough. 